So today I'm here with Łukasz Wilczynski, president of the Space Communications Alliance and uh, European Space Foundation. And he's the organizer of the European Rover Challenge. And he is a speaker and a comms and PR person for tech and innovation. Hi, Bukash. How are you? Hi, thanks. Thanks for hosting me here. Uh, yeah, that's that's the long part of how to introduce me. But I uh, first of all, I'm a huge space geek and a person who just communicated from all of my heart. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's why you're here. That's why we, we speak today. <laughs> so tell me, how did you end up in space? So when you were a little boy, did you always want to get into space? How did it happen? Well, that's that's true. Uh, well, I, I, I was born in Poland. So when I was born, Poland was still kind of, you know, behind the Iron Curtain still, because it was 70s. Um, so there was a little materials little known about the space sector in our country because it was a part of the Soviet Soviet uh, uh, space project. We only had one cosmonaut flying on the Soyuz then. Uh, it's the, the year before I was born. So we had Miroslav Hermoszewski. Unfortunately, he died last, uh, last year. Um, so I, I always dreamed about space because it was something magical, you know? And when, when you read about in the books, about rockets, about something that is coming. Uh, I remember that in Polish TV, we had this, uh, uh, the Jason from the stars. I think it was this kind of TV series. And then uh, when I was a little guy, uh, uh, I was uh, brought by my uncle for the Star Wars movie. And wow, yeah, I, I saw the original one. So actually... It was amazing to to see all of this, and probably the story is like you've heard it like a thousand times that that the that, that some Star Wars fan started to interest in the space. But yes, that 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 was the thing. But it wasn't really a, a Star Wars that pushed me to this to this because it was only a childish you know dreams, and I had many dreams, many interests as a as a kid. But then I went to the high school, and then I. I made a first contact with uh, the next generation series of Star Trek, yeah. and I fall in love in this in this in this uh, ecosystem in this you know this series, and then I started to really really read about it, to deepen my knowledge, and to really foster my my passion to space. So the game changer was uh, go where no one has gone before. So that was the, the 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 game changer for me. So really, the Star Trek pushed me into into this. That's so cool. You are a proper space geek. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then then all your studies, because oh my god, you have a lot of qualifications. Well, um, I started history. That's amazing because I'm historian, and when I studied history, I already was uh, a member of the Mass Society Poland. Because then the mass society expanded uh, into into Poland as well, so I just joined them, and I was like a volunteer translating things for the website. And I dreamed about meeting Robert Zubrin someday because it was very very inspiring to read his books. And and then I started to think, why not graduating by writing a thesis about history of of, of space exploration. Wow. And my 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 uh, professors at my university said, "What? <laughs> You've got to be kidding us, right? It's not a history; it's a science fiction." I said, "No, no, 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 no. If we are talking about you know fifty six, for example, fifty three till two thousands, that's a piece of the history. That's fifty years of history, and it's a mankind history. So I have to do it. So I took this and." That's the that that's the first book I made. It's in Polish, but it's a uh, it's my thesis actually. I was a little guy like that after graduating. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. me. <laughs> and it was American um, uh, space managed programs, uh, thirty three, as you can see, and two thousand two. When I finished this book, my thesis as well, then the Columbia happened. Uh, it was yeah. exactly when I sent it to the publisher. And then Colombia. So there is also appendix here. And it was amazing because this is the only book like this in Poland. Mm. Uh, and then I started, you know, to 
uh, work not in my profession because uh, I always like to promote something, to talk about something. So I started to go for, for a PR, for a PR business. And after many years, I started when I, you know, when I gained this experience of, of my own, I started my own agency and I returned to my first passion. And I started to work pro bono uh, for mass society in Poland. Right. And then I connected two worlds, the communication part and the space part. So actually, my agency, it was Planet PR then, now it's Planet Partners in Poland. Uh, it was the very first agency in Poland that announced loudly it's working for the space sector. Mm -hmm. And it was before Poland joined ESA. So the Polish sector was not like it's, it's like now, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, one big institute, maybe several few companies rising a little bit. And, and it was this. And, and we proudly said that we are working for the space sector. So of course, the beginnings were hard because people were saying, well, Lucas, you are kind of, you know, out of this orbit. But then I started to work closely with the uh, students' organizations. And I saw that the Mass Society in States established uh, uh, an amazing tournament, the University Rover Challenge in Utah. Right. And, I, and then I, I was already a, a friend of Robert Zubin. I already met him during the, the previous years. And I then met I, him this year and I bought one of his books and it's amazing. He's yeah. a fun guy. Bob is an amazing guy. <laughs> and, um, and then I, I asked him, can we uh, send a Polish team to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it will be great because only Americans and Canadians, that's it. So we started to work inside Mass Society Poland to get a team and get them over there to states. Right. So I was responsible, guess what, for the communication part, uh, for also ad advising to go to sponsors, etc. So it was amazing times. It was amazing times where we knocked the doors. Hello, sir. We have a first Martian rover team from Poland. And then it was like, what? <laughs> but it was, uh, we were very convincing. We, go we got a few sponsors for the beginning and, and it started. You know, Polish teams started to participate in this competition and they started to win it. And it was like, wow, we were the masters of the universe, right? And other stories. Um, and then we decided to think about something bigger. So, and then was the game changer for me because then I finally found my place in the universe because we established European Over Challenge as a European edition of this, of this competition, but totally different, a big, big, big event. And with that, I established European Space Foundation, which is right now my place on Earth. Wow, okay. Um, right, so what does the European Space Foundation do? It's, a, it's an NGO that actually supports uh, two things. Supports, of course, every, uh, all the activities in the STEM, or STEAM, or E-STEM. I mostly prefer the, the recent one, the environmental STEM. Um, so we actually uh, join many projects or do our own projects for uh, teaching uh, kids, students, uh, different parts of how the space sector changed their lives. We, for example, have a project for um, embracing them in the knowledge, how to use uh, satellite data okay. for getting more knowledge about the climate change. Or right now, the next year, we will be making amazing projects about how to use that data for uh, mm, solving a water problem, like okay. droughts, like, you know, uh, some floods, et cetera, et cetera. And, and actually, we will fund uh, one, one, uh, one solution. The, the, the best one, right? It will be kind of competition. Um, but we also support many projects that are like, like a hard project. For example, there is a Polish consortium for the moon. It's mm -hmm. called Mirores. And the European Space Foundation is part of the consortium, responsible for making a business plan for future utilization of the moon resources. Mm -hmm. So we are also the part of this ESA, because this is for ESA. It's an ESA, ESA project. Uh, we also support another uh, um, activities in Colombia because we have a division in Colombia. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's a funny thing. We have that's people in Colombia. I know, I know. <laughs> but it was many years ago when I and it was 2019. I was in Colombia for some lectures uh, about the space, etc. And then I met amazing people, amazing people. Uh, if German would be watching this, I, I I really really love you guys because they showed me a totally different world. They are making this kind of things from algas, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. They are thinking how we will produce the food on on Mars and. And then I met these people and they told me, ask me, can they use the European Space Foundation logo for their activities? I said, yes, guys, it's a platform. Everyone can jump in and everyone can bring projects. And this is how the foundation grows right now. We have new projects. We just won the, the competition of, 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 of grants from the Pratt & Whitney as the only European organization over there among 15 uh, finalists. So th this, is, this is amazing what we started here. And of course, the main flagship project is the European Rover Challenge because th sure. this is the Primus Interparas project. Okay, before we get into that, so how can people engage with the European Space Foundation? Just go on the website. We're going yep. to link it below. So, okay. Yeah, there is a spacefdn.com. They can just, you know, search what we do, who we are, and they can join us. They can join us, um, jump into our projects that are already existing. Or, for example, they can write us, look, guys, we have this kind of project. Can we do it under the one banner? And mm -hmm. this is how we also do things, because we have also affiliate partners. Okay. So, you know, building this kind of brand is great, because then they can use other our brands for also legitimate their own projects. And this is good, because th this, this is working for both of us. And we already have affiliate members also from Poland, from Jordan, one of the projects. So. It's working, really working. I'm very happy about that. Well done. Congratulations. That's an amazing initiative. Um, okay. And the rover challenge. Tell me about all that. Well, you that's, that's an amazing story. thing. A, a few weeks ago, we spoke and you showed me something. If, if Yeah, if, that's amazing thing. You know, <laughs> the rover challenge started, of course, as a copy of this, you know, American competition. Of course, I, I always say this. But from the day one, I... So this American competition through my uh, PR eyes. So what I saw that, that there was always a problem for the teams to um, make their sponsors happy, right? Because over there in Utah, there is only a desert. There isn't even no connection to show, you know, any logos, or, et cetera. So there is no publicity. There are no media over there. So actually what we started with European Over Challenge was to create already a huge event from the day one that will be that will consist of three parts. The first one is the rover challenge. So you have a mass yard and you have rovers. Okay. Then we have the uh, STEM picnic. So there are like you know uh, dozens of tents with with companies with the science clubs, and you can touch everything. You can, you can really approach the experiments. And this is amazing for the young generation, the youngest one, right? You can wear helmets. You can wear space uniforms. That's amazing. You can play with robots right now. Um, and there is also a, a conference. The conference is very important because this is a kind of inspiration conference. And at this conference, you can find really good names. Mm -hmm. Because we hosted like Harrison Schmidt from Apollo 17. Twice we had an administrator of NASA. We have people from, from um, many space agencies, uh, heads of uh, directors, managers. But we also have people from the industry. And together we are talking about Mars, Moon and Earth. Because it's a three-day three -day event. So over there we discuss. We have debates. And we always touch the different kind of stories that are not usually discussed at the big, big space conferences. So we, we look at another angle. It's open for everyone. Everyone can in and everyone can be inspired and everyone can go to the, these VIPs and talk with them. It's always amazing when our volunteers saying, oh my God, I just talked to the administrator of NASA. And exactly. he advised me something. It was like amazing <laughs> thing, right? Uh, and this is how we inspire people. But the, mo the main thing is, and of course, we make a transmission of all of this. So we have this, you know, uh, one studio is in the, in the conference room, the, another studio we have next to the Mars yard, and then we, tra we transmit all of the three days. So we have this kind of 
online TV program. Mm -hmm. um, this program is actually being hosted for, but for the last few years, uh, we have a special host, it's Remco Timmermans. So hi, Remco, if you watch this. <laughs> hi, uh, Remco. So Remco is our social host, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then we always have what a day it is, <laughs> uh, yeah. his favorite. And um, and we this year we reached like one million people tot in total uh, going to us, watching us through Instagram, through social media, through YouTube, or, or through our website. So this is amazing, and this is a real, real. Uh, this is a real thing. And what is very important, what is happening at, on the Mars yard itself, we build Mars. We don't have Utah. That was our problem. We yeah. don't have Utah desert. Yeah. We have some kind of university premises. So we decided to build Mars. Okay, so you can bring like a red uh, soil, you know, with hematite, put it everywhere, it will look like Mars. Not with us. We wanted to do it exactly the Mars. So we, uh, we were advised by the planetary geologists that are also our um, uh, members of the jury and also our co-organizers to make some of the part of the Mars in scale. So, for example, we have Elysium Planitia. We had uh, a place for the Perseverance landing, exactly made in scale. So we have volcanoes. We have lava tubes. We have this kind of, uh, and the, some of the volcanoes are active because there are pipes inside and we are putting some, some um, uh, cool. smoke over there. Um, we have lava tubes. We have craters. Yeah. And this, this Mars yard is also built internally in, by layers by layers. So you can actually drill in and you can see what kind of layer the, the rover actually took the sample from. It's a piece of science. Yeah, and these geologists, they are me. making papers on it. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's huge. It's like 50 meters, 40 meters. And after the competition, we put people on there. So sorry, Elon, we were <laughs> fast. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's 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 also the thing that people can touch Mars. Actually, that's amazing. Yeah, I have to go there. I definitely have to see this. Um, yeah. yeah, we can stand on Mars. That's amazing. Yes, I want to. And and last time you showed me the the soil, like how, yeah. how it's built up, and that's amazing. So I definitely want to go there and see it for myself. That's so cool. Um, again, uh, we will put the link in below how to engage with uh, the rover challenge. Um, Okay, so actually, that's actually that's it, it demands to, to, to explain people that okay. if you want to come to us just to see it like you, you can come. There is no registration at all, etc. For the publicity, there is no registration. You just you can just come, right? right. If you want to participate in the competition itself, mm -hmm. then that's a different story because, right. um, in January, this, this January that is coming, we will publish the rules and then the team has to start registering. Mm -hmm. So it's like a way ahead of the competition. You have to register your team. Then you have to, you know, uh, comply the, the terms by sending papers like PDRs, CDRs, like in the space project. So you cannot come as a team to participate if you are not registered like a few months before. Of course. As yeah. a participant, it's free. You can come in, you can go in and... If you are there, you can step on Mars. Oh, that's so cool. Um, just one thing. So when does it happen? Is it in the summer? Nah, it's at the end of the summer because it will be in the beginning of September. Right. It's because okay. we partner with the university and we need dormitories. Mm, sure. So September is free of students. So that's why we have dormitories. Yeah. Why? Because we have like our team is 20 people organizing this, 20 judges and all, almost 100 volunteers. They have to sleep somewhere, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. And there are also 1,000 members of the team. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, you also mentioned something last time, which I think was pretty amazing. So, you made this happen even throughout COVID as well. Yeah. So how did that work? How, how did you manage? Uh, that's, a, that's a teamwork, you know, that's that, that amazing team that we have because, uh, I remember 2020 was very hard for everyone. And, and when we were doing this, suddenly I, I had a call with our team uh, coordinator and Conrad said, Lukas, it's, it's, it's not going to happen because, you know, uh, the teams are locked down. 
and some of them, they have rovers locked down at the universities. They cannot even work with them. Mm. So actually, that's a bummer. We cannot do it. So we had that discussion, and I said, guys, we have to do it. Come on, we have a grant, and we have to do it. I think we, we can find a, a, a solution for that. So actually, the things happened like in the Apollo 13 movie, you know, you have this, you have that, and you have like one hour to create this, right? You have to make it happen, yeah. Yeah, but except they have two months. But yeah. after two months, uh, they came with to me with the idea, look, we have Mars Yard, it's being built, okay? So we have these tiny rovers of this one of the Polish companies, and we have this American startup that has uh, uh, a software for controlling robots uh, remotely. So we can join it and then everyone from the teams can participate in it remotely. So guess what? We brought the rovers to the Mars yard. We used this software to, uh, allowed by, by this company, uh, my, but my team had to add something to, this, to the code of the, of the software because only if I have this like X and Y axis, because it was for um, uh, controlling the inspection robots uh, for the, you know, magazines, for factories. So they, they didn't need a, a 3D uh, mm -hmm. dimension, like a Z-axis. So my team had to, you know, program it. Yeah. Because we have these ma manipulators in rovers, etc. So we had this, and the teams were controlling rovers remotely. Like mm -hmm. sitting on the couch, uh, sitting, like, the teams were connecting from balconies, from the couch, from the gardens. And then it introduced a remote competition. It was amazing because people were like thousands of kilometers away and they were driving. Also, we allowed publicity uh, on site, but there was limits. So it only there were like 5,000 at, at the same time. Everyone was checked, of course, the masks, everything. Yeah. So it was absolutely pure uh, sanitary you know, regulations, but the teams were connected remotely. We were the only robotics competition in the world that actually happened in 2020. And yeah, that after that, I received a lot of emails like, how did you do it? So we <laughs> sent all these documents. Look, this is how you do it, right? That's fantastic. Well yeah. done. I'm very proud of my team. It was amazing. I'm amazing. very proud of you as well. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't me. It was this guy. Yes, me, right? yes, yeah. obviously. That's amazing. Thank you for telling me that. Um, okay. And then we move on to the Space Communications Alliance. Wow, a lot of <laughs> stories, right, today? Yeah, um, I, I was kind of there when it, well, not there, but I was, I know Torsten, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I, I know when it was founded, but how did that come about and what do you do there? Well, um, as I mentioned before, I, I, I have a PR agency that works for the space sector. We had, we had some, some clients in Poland um, and we also work internally with many companies, with many other PR agencies in the world. And I always wanted to, you know, um, to create some kind of service for the space sector globally. But um, the space sector still is very enigmatic. It's very hermetic for, for some of people. If you are not in, it's very difficult to understand it sometimes. Yeah. So I have a, this idea that was running on my head for many years. Why not create the, the network but it won't be a network only of PR people, but it will be a network of the PR marketing and communication specialists that can deliver different kinds of services, sometimes very complementary to each other. Mm -hmm. So we can create an ecosystem that in one place, you can have everything. You can have PR, you can have uh, designers, content creators, social hosts, et cetera, et cetera, podcast creators, uh, and you can have everything in one place. So this is what started to, to, to drive me, that first I decided to uh, leave my chair in an uh, agency, and I left it to my uh, colleague, um, my um, uh, co-owner of my agency, and then I focused on create this kind of network. So I call it, we call it Space Communications Alliance, but before that, I connected with the people I knew from the space sector, Thorsten, Judith from Perihelium, uh, Remco included, and from the people that I knew from the PR services, that I knew that they also had some connections with the space. And connecting these two worlds, then we had Space Communications Alliance. And this is unique because there is no other network like that. We are the only global marketing and communication network for the space sector. 
And what is very also unique, we speak space. Because when yes. the clients come to us, they say, okay, do, do we have to, you know, I don't know, introduce you to the space sector? Well, come on. We <laughs> are in the space sector, right? I'm yes. also a member of IF. Many of us are. So actually, we don't we, we, we don't have to, you know, introduce us to, to the space sector. We don't have to uh, work a few months for understanding what is happening in the company. You just have to point out the targets, your business goals, actually, your budgets, and then we can deliver you a very tailored-made solution for actually your goals. And this is totally new. And I know that it, there is a rising interest in this network. We can see it. It's a rising interest. And what is also amazing is that the, the members are connecting to each other internally. They are just, you know, working together on some kind of uh, activities and, and, and they exchange uh, um, uh, experiences. That's amazing. That's amazing to, to see this. Uh, of course, we have these online meetings because we have members from from west to east, even to Australia. Um, and we once a year, we meet together offline, on site. We always uh, select the, the big space event that is happening. So last year, it was Paris, it was IAC. This year was the space, the Hexpo in Bremen. Next year, it would probably IAC in Milan. Yeah. So, but right now, if you are going to any events, uh, you can find us. Just, you know, look people with this kind of lanyards. Right. Like a proud members, proud member of the Space Communication Alliance. <laughs> you see someone like that wearing this, then approach the person and ask for the SCA. Okay. So, uh, and we can see that we are everywhere on almost every event space right now. So that's, that's amazing. Well, at least one of you is everywhere. Like I, I go to a lot of conferences and I, I see you guys um, all over the place. The blue team is everywhere. That's, that's yeah. good. <laughs> right. So um, I can see that Astro Agency, who I know because I used to be in Scotland, um, so I know them. Astro Agency is a, a part of the Space Communications yes. Alliance. So how do you work together? Aren't you like, uh, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> well. So generally, it depends. As I said, it depends on the goals and on the needs of the of the of the company or institution. So, um, for example, um, if the member has uh, already a client that is that is uh, I don't know uh, stands in the direct conflict of interest, then yeah. the network is for because you can work with someone else. That's that's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, internally. It's like that the client is coming usually to either to the member. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's uh, it's the, the the need is coming from guys. I have uh, been approached by this kind of company and they need this, this, and this. How we can solve it? And then we work together to create an offer. Mm -hmm. Then and when they de de deliver it, and th there is always a lead. So there's always one agency leading this. So mm -hmm. the client will not have to you know look for this agency, this and this. One invoice, one point of contact, everything is done. Right, because right. we are making things done, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes clients are coming to me as a, as a, as a president of the SCA, and then I'm uh, creating a short brainstorm internally. Then I'm pointing out who will be leading with this, who will be you know, creating the offer, and we are del delivering the, the services. So this is, for example, recently we were working for the software defined space conference in Estonia, and it was created by three of our members directly from UK, Torsten as a space was global and Remco. And they created an amazing service with, you know, PR and, and content delivery and social hosting. Mm -hmm. And it was complementary for the client. And I already heard that it was working very good and very well for them. Because you have everything in one place. Mm -hmm. Everything you want from the marketing and communication in one place. That's, That's very convenient, right? Yeah, it is. And well, I have to be a client. Of <laughs> yeah, and if you are the client from different time zone, then we will give you the member from the from your closer to your time zone. Sure. So you don't have to, you know, change these time zones where of to course. when to meet. No, no yeah. you will have the member from your time zone, uh, if it's possible, even from your country. Yeah. Then That's it's very clever. convenient. Yeah, very clever. Is there anything else you want to say or a message that you want to leave us with before we say goodbye? Well, I I think that. Um, I think that uh, everyone should, that that's my invitation to go for their over challenge you 
mm. and to check out all the news that will be happening because I think that if you are in Europe, uh, that's that's great to come in se next September to Poland, to Krakow. It will be in Krakow. Come on, you will have a trip to an amazing city first. Yeah. And the second, you will join the whole space community uh, mm. that is coming. And uh, it will be 10th anniversary. So we will yeah. have this kind of, you know, um, gala, the parties. Oh, yeah. Did I mention that we have like a huge party every day, every year? Oh, well, no. you're Polish, so I believe that you have parties. But this is something every member <laughs> of the team is waiting for. It's always on Saturday in the middle of the, of the, of the, um, of the event. And there is a party. Everyone dance with everyone. There is no competition then. Then it's only cooperation. Okay. Uh, especially uh, so. next to the bar. And, and there is a big cooperation. Over there, to pass on things. So actually, like, you know, engineers, scientists, big names, VIPs, all together. And there is no, like, a VIP zone or something. This is, this is, this is what ERC is famous of. Right. That we are not separating people. Yeah. Artificially sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we want this. And that's why VIPs are coming. They want to give these examples. They want to be an example. And yeah. this, is, this is amazing because people can actually approach uh, very famous names and to be inspired and they are returning coming back uh, I, I know that this is why we have so many uh, volunteers mm -hmm. they dream about it and among some of them I can see me because when Robert Zubrin is coming to ERC for example I can see some people asking me can I approach yes of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. or Artemis Westenberg from Expert Mars yes she's for, for you over there so actually, what we do over there, we inspire people. And you can be inspired. If you want to be inspired, you can come and be inspired. But if you want to come and make business, that's also the place you can do it. Because then you can shake hands with someone very important or someone you, you actually seek for. Or maybe you are looking for the employee. Yeah. Oh, then you have everyone that is actually needed for your company. On yeah. site. I definitely have to go. We'll yeah. We'll make it happen. <laughs> uh, you will have the place in the first... Uh, role actually <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you for talking to me and telling um, me and the audience uh, about all the fantastic things you do um, I learned a lot and I'm very excited and I'm going to link in all the websites um, that we talked about so people people can register and check you out great thank you thank you for that thank you very much